Molecules can travel between cells or through cells, known respectively as the paracellular and transcellular routes. Transcytosis is a vital cellular process that allows macromolecules to move through cells from one side to the other. This is how nutrients, antibodies and even some drugs bypass tightly regulated barriers like the blood-brain barrier or intestinal lining. Understanding transcytosis is key to unlocking advanced drug delivery systems, targeting diseases and appreciating how our bodies manage complex transport logistics at the microscopic level. Let's explore how cells pull off this impressive feat. Molecules travelling in the circulation are dissolved in blood. Blood flows through arteries to capillaries, which form a network of fine vessels throughout all of the body's tissues. As blood leaves the capillaries, it enters the veins to be circulated back to the heart. Capillaries are the site at which solutes and fluid can transfer between the blood and the tissue. Capillaries are lined with a monolayer of endothelial cells, which act as a barrier to prevent the loss of blood into tissues. It also limits what can cross from the blood into tissues and vice versa. Small nonpolar molecules like the blood gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide can diffuse freely across the endothelial cells from blood to the interstitial fluid and from the interstitial fluid to blood. It's a different story for large lipid insoluble molecules, which cannot diffuse across. They can be trapped within the capillaries and cannot cross the endothelial barrier. An example is the plasma protein albumin, which is restricted to plasma where it plays a very important role. Some large molecules do, however, have ways of crossing the endothelial cells. Transcytosis is a mechanism by which macromolecules can be transported across endothelial cells. The types of macromolecules that use this process include proteins, antibodies and hormones. A specific example is insulin. The molecule binds to a site on the luminal side or blood facing side of the cell. This triggers invagination of the plasma membrane which forms a vesicle around the molecule. It then pinches off into the endothelial cell and travels through the cytoplasm to the other side of the cell. The vesicle uses the cytoskeleton, especially microtubules, to make its journey. When it reaches the opposite side, the vesicle membrane fuses with the plasma membrane, releasing the molecule into the interstitial space of the tissue. There are distinct mechanisms employed in transcytosis. One is receptor mediated and the other is adsorptive mediated. In receptor mediated transcytosis, the process begins when a macromolecule binds to a specific receptor on the cell surface. In contrast, adsorptive transcytosis depends on an electrostatic interaction between the molecule and the membrane. The mechanism is most common for positively charged cations as they are attracted to the negatively charged membrane. These two different mechanisms of interaction mean that receptor mediated transcytosis is highly specific while the adsorptive type is much less specific. As there is a limited pool of receptors in a cell, binding is saturable. In other words, once all the receptors are occupied, transcytosis is maximal and no more molecules can be transported. The non-specific nature of adsorptive transcytosis means that it is less saturable. These properties mean that the receptor mediated pathway is more efficient for low concentrations of molecules, but the adsorptive pathway can handle higher concentrations as well as larger molecules. 
A final difference between the pathways is in the types of vesicles employed to transport molecules through the cell. While receptor-mediated transcytosis seems to always employ clathrin-coated vesicles, the adsorptive pathway often forms the vesicles from cavioli, which are invaginations in a cell membrane that are rich in the protein caviolin. Thank you.